G'day listeners and viewers and welcome again to the Three Feet Radio Show. There's been some breaking news. It's been the retirement of uh, Matty Brown, the um, Collingwood and a former Australian Diamonds defender. And joining us today to discuss her retirement is Matty Brown. G'day Matty, how are you going? Ben, how are you? Very well, thank you. Like, like you were saying on off air just before we started, very fitting your last interview for today is with me. We have fond memories. I know. Yeah. I think my first interview was probably with you. So as I said, very fitting that we finish like this and um, you get the last scoop of the retiree or the stepping away from this elite level, which is nice. And just, and just on that, we, have, we certainly have got um, fond mem- you would have, we'd have some fond memories of um, those cold nights out at Waverley with Kestrels back in the day. Oh, don't remind me. That was years ago. But yes, mm. there were some cold nights out there, I think in front of, I don't know, a crowd of probably 200 people and mm. 100 of them were probably coming up from Geelong and I'd hired the bus and bought th- and probably hired them to come and support me. So, um, yes, it's been a long journey since wearing that orange horrendous tracksuit for the Kestrels, but lucky that I got to do it at least. <laughs> and it's not the way you wanted to end your career considering this year's COVID-19 situation and, a, and another injury setback. No, uh, I, I guess after last year, um, having done my ACL and um, going, you know, do I still want to play netball? Can I still give to this sport? Um, yeah, it's been a long journey back um, to playing, but at the same time, you know, it's it's not the it's not the fairy tale ending anyone would really want. You want to play in that grand final, and you want to win, and you want to have all your family there, um, or you want to be able to step off or walk off the court. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I think it epitomises maybe a little bit of what my journey has been—an up and down roller coaster ride. And it's it's been a bit gritty and a bit um, hard, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't also change it. So um, it's time. My body said that's enough and I, I can't give you any more at this level. So I still want to play um, and it's the right decision for me to make um, to have a good quality of life after as well. You talk about, so you want to play, is this a scoop? Can we see you um, suiting up for South Barwon in the GFNL? Oh gosh, uh, it's been a while since I've donned the Swans outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've still got they've still got the Maddie Brown netball post down there. I think when I first won my very, um, you know, when we won MVPs and you gave back to your local netball association. So mm. I mean, it would be quite funny to see me out there. But they'd probably have to take me as I don't know a goal shooter or back in the day when I was a goal attack and someone not moving. And I probably wouldn't even get a game for A grade at this rate. So <laughs> um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. As I said, I I still very much want to play the sport. I still love it and I'm very passionate about it so um, at some level would be nice but it's just not going to be at this elite level I've, I cannot give any any more so um, yeah we'll see what happens. <laughs> and playing with your sister at the highest um, level must have been a, a career highlight as well especially at Collingwood. It was um, you know we obviously did get a few minutes here and there at the Vixens mm. but not not what we've been able to do um, in being here in the black and white um, it, it is it is a really good like at the top of my highlight list. Um, there's been some really good you know team successes and even individual successes. But you know I've been in her life her entire time and I know how hard she's worked for this and I know and she's been there through all my highs and and lows through this um, you know sport as well. So um, to be able to to get in that circle and and feed her that first centre pass um, when we did was, um, yeah, a dream come true and something I think for a while we were unsure whether it would happen. So even though it was only a couple of times, um, I'm forever grateful that we actually got the chance to do it. It's probably a bit of a tough one to ask, but which particular game either with Kestrels, Fever, Vixens or Collingwood, or even representing your country stands out for you? Like, do you have a particular memorable game? Well... The the grand final in Glasgow, the, the gold medal game in Glasgow, mm. um, for, for the personnel that were on court, I think mm. as well, um, you know, it was an incredible team. And you look at that list, you know, that were on the court and even the bench as well, um, you know, have got some incredible players that have played this game. So, yeah, that um, is definitely a highlight. Um I even think, you know, playing the grand final um, with Vixens was obviously, um, you know, alongside Jeeva 
um, mm. who, you know, has been there through some really um, pivotal moments in my netball career as well um, and right to the end. Um, but, you know, my, as I said, you know, at the top of that list is playing with Kelsey and I think probably that, that Swifts game um, or even the last time we played FIBA were probably some, you know, incredible passages of play that we got um, to do together. Um, and it was probably just a little snapshot of maybe what could have been possible if we were allowed to um, have that little bit of extra time. But, hey, it's not meant to be. Um, and as I said, we're very thankful that we actually got to, to put, it, put it out on court and give people a little bit of what um, the Brown sisters could do, I think. And you spoke about Jeeva, obviously you've been um, co-captain with G. How have you found that? Like it's been your first foray into captaincy um, at any level, I believe. Yeah, I, I think um, even as a leadership group, we've obviously got Jeeva and I as the co-captains and Kelsey as a vice-captain. And each three of us individually are very different um, and bring different strengths and have different areas that the other one kind of is really good at. So I think as a, um, you know, as a group of three is the three musketeers. I think we've kind of, um, you know, worked quite well in, um, you know, how we deliver our roles and go about our leadership styles. Um, we probably unfortunately didn't get to see it um, as long or for as long or as many games as we would have liked to have the three of us out there. And um, not only, you um, in our uh, approach off the court, but also our approach on the court in playing all together. But at the same time, you know, it's it's not often that you get to, you know, be in those positions and have um, so much influence and impact on a team. Um, and although the success isn't out on court, I think what we are developing and what we have been able to, um, you know, achieve as a leadership group in the last couple of years will hopefully leave the um, the club and, and the team in a really good position to be successful in the future. Maybe not now, but definitely in the future to come. And you talk about the future and being successful. What kind of legacy do you feel um, you yourself will leave behind at Collingwood? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I've always, I guess, um, prided myself on, you know, my work rate and um, the standards that I set. Um, some really nice messages from like my team the other night when I told them face to face was, you know, what would Maddie do off the court or what would Maddie do on the court? So I think, you know, um, as I said, I've, I hope that I've left no stone unturned. I've um, given everything I could physically, emotionally, mentally um, to the game when I've been in it um, and I will continue to do so um, for many years in what capacity, I don't know, but um, hopefully it's a, it's a legacy that it's, um, you know, when I had the opportunities, I made the most of them. Um, I've been very grateful um, and never taken it for granted um, because I have had it taken away from me at times. So yeah, just making the most of everything that has come to me and um, kind of, yeah, delivering whatever I could on any given day. Um, hopefully that's something that will remain. And your mum and dad have been very vocal supporters of yours. Do you think you're going to miss um, them being at every game or they're going to miss um, them being at every game. I have fond memories of chatting with your mum. She'd always ask, so Ben, have you met someone yet? I'm like, no, that's my business to worry about. Just watch your daughter play. <laughs> a little gossip that um, Chris she Brown. Just like, Marie, just, just like Marie Walsh, Sarah's mum. <laughs> there you go. So I'm glad you've got fond memories of her in the stand. I think, yeah, um, yeah like we're missing them at the moment. Um, they obviously weren't able to come up and watch us. Um, like a lot of family, friends and supporters back home. And we are thinking of them all in Melbourne because we know it's really, really hard and tough. But, um, you know, I don't know. I think mum and dad will probably, you know, we'll, all three of us will still be there um, supporting and watching Kelsey play for many, many years to come. Um, but, yeah, she might not be as exhausted after um, games as much anymore because she plays every single ball. So does dad. And then at the end, they're like, oh, I'm exhausted. So... Hopefully they'll, um, you know, have a little bit more energy to go and do some exciting stuff. And um, as I said, we'll, we'll continue to be involved in netball. Um, but yeah, we'll also sit down as a family when we do get together back home and I think reminisce and reflect on some incredible memories that we've actually been able to enjoy all together as a floor. And just lastly, you talk about still being involved and still wanting to play. Um, could you see yourself maybe like doing a little bit of coaching as well? Like, can you see yourself moving into coaching at all or anything like maybe, that? Maybe. Um, I, I get, like, I have an education degree. Um, yeah. So I do like that teaching and kind of that educating and um, working with juniors. Um, 
But I think at the moment, uh, what I love is game day and I loved competing and, um, you know, I still do want to get out there and, and have that feeling of playing again. Um, I will have to obviously have some surgery and um, get my body right, but hopefully in another couple of months time, you know, I might be able to get out there and, and still play netball next year um, in some capacity, just not at this level. It's, it's too demanding. Um, and so, yeah, I do need a bit of a gap here, I think, from definitely Australian netball and um, at this elite level and just take a, a seat back and go, okay, where am I? Um, where can I contribute? Where can I um, still maybe be an asset to a, a club or a team or an organisation um, and, and continue to have that passion? I'm, I'm very lucky that I still do have... Um, so much love for this game um, and what it has been able to give me. So not everyone steps away still loving it. So, uh, yeah, I'm very lucky that I still have a lot of passion and, and want to contribute in, in some capacity. Okay. Thanks very much for joining us today, Maddie. It's been a pleasure uh, covering your career and always talking to you. And um, thanks for always making the time for me. And I'm sure I'll see you around. Absolutely. Thank you, Ben. You take well, uh, take care of yourself and, and stay happy and healthy back there. And I'll see you courtside in the future. Thank you. Stay safe. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.